Welcome back everybody to the Giants franchise rebuild on Madden 22. We got off to a very strong start last episode, destroying the defending champion Vikings. Yes, that actually happened. 37 to 10. Vikings won the Super Bowl last year. They are the team to beat and we did so rather easily in week one. So now we look ahead to today's episode, starting with a tandem breakout on offense that I have to think involves Ray Sean Graham. So Jason Weaver is pointing out how Graham could not be stopped last game, and that is accurate. Do we want to praise Jason Weaver or challenge him? Definitely challenge. The, the backup receivers are not even backup, like... Weaver and Myers combined for two catches on the whole day. 28 yards, I think it was. So it can't just be Rayshon Graham all the time. Someone's got to step up in other games. I'm excited to see what Jason Weaver could turn into in this series, but the XP requirements are getting pretty steep. He's not going to be developing a ton. He's really just got to produce now. But hey, when you got Rayshon Graham on the other side, I think he's going to be able to find a way to make some plays. But man, Rayshon Graham has just been so fun the last couple of years. Started a bit slowly, you know, 599 in his first year is decent. But I mean, he was a first round pick, so it's not like super impressive. And neither was the 774 yard season. But then... Everything's been taken up to a new level. A lot more big plays. And he's just... I think he's still getting better, which is the scary part. So I'm not planning on watching this entire Cardinals game, but because there is the tandem breakout, I didn't want to just skip past it entirely. So we do have the Cardinals here in Week 2, and it's a big game for Jason Weaver. Now, 150 yards is tough, but with his speed, it's certainly doable. But also, there's like a bonus for getting touchdowns. So, let's make our way to the second half. See what the score is. See where everything is at. And then maybe we'll find a different game later in the episode that we want to also add in. But we are up big right now. 21, make it 28 nothing. Let's see if Weaver had a piece of that. Three touchdowns here for Brian Petrovsky. And Weaver doesn't have any of them, but he does have 58 yards. Now, Dion Myers did catch a touchdown. So did Warren Griffith and Jawan Johnson. So, I suppose I'd be down to watch a little bit of the offense. Pretty good sign, though, that we are steamrolling two teams right away. Right now, Houston leads over Dallas. I'd love to see uh, them take the early season defeat. Texans are still starting Josh Rosen. Whatever works. Here's Tavares Towns on second down, spinning off contact, and he gets a few. Third down for New York. It could just be a lot of Towns in this half. And the pass is caught. That's Jawan Johnson to move the chains. I did change Deion Myers' number to five, and then... Realize Jason Weaver's number is also retired. With certain teams, it gets tough, man. The Giants have retired. All right, get ready for this. 1, 4, 7, 10, 11, 14, twice. As the pass is caught by Rayshon Graham. 16, 32, 40, 42, 50, 56, 92. And Madden doesn't do anything to recognize that for you, so... Giants have been around for a long, long time. So they have a lot of retired numbers. Off the fake on first down. Petrovsky takes off and has some running room as he gets nine. Third and short. It's Tavares Towns with the first down yardage. He's at 50 yards. The first two games, though, have been kind of a slow start for him after a huge breakout season a year ago. Looks like the Vikings are playing better this week. They lead the Packers right now. Always happy to see that. Toss out to Towns. Trying to get on the edge. And he's taken down by Zaven Collins at the 32. 
Dion Myers slot left. We haven't seen much from him yet. On third down, it's intercepted. Zavin Collins jumps in front and Petrovsky brings him down. So we get the bad interception, but that was a play like... We don't often see that one intercepted. This is kind of automatic first down when you throw it to Jawan Johnson. Not this time. But this game has no drama and we do win easily. Final score, 35 to seven. So we get two great wins in the NFC to start the season. Three scores for Petrovsky, the one mistake. Tavares Towns ends up a buck 13, two touchdowns. And Jason Weaver did lead the team with 88 yards, but I don't think he'll get anything special for this performance. Jason Quinton did have an interception, and Aziz Ojulari, along with Quandre Holt, had sacks. I want to see what Dion Myers can do, though. He's just been kind of quiet there in the slot, and maybe it just takes a little bit more route running. Did not get much from that upgrade. Still at 75 short, 75 medium. So we do have the Cowboys up next. We will sim past this game and try to find something here in a few weeks that's interesting. I mean, Cowboys are up again in week six, so I'd rather focus on that if it ends up being the important matchup it could be. And the Cowboys do win this game in overtime, putting up a lot of yardage. Brian Petrovsky, two touchdowns. Dak had four with two interceptions that he overcame. C.D. Lamb, 146, two touchdowns. Manny Cowan. Remember, they actually have a fair amount of turnover this year because both Amari Cooper and Ezekiel Elliott retired this last season. So how good will this offense be? Well, good enough to drop 30 on us and almost 500 yards right there. And then suddenly we lose the next game to the Green Bay Packers, 21-17. So that's a little strange. The Packers are a team we've done really well against in this series. Cooper Petrovsky, 101. So a quiet day for the offense. And we dropped a 2-2 two and two before we play a couple more in-division games. Now before we go through any more, let's talk about whose contracts do we have to think about for this season now. It's going to be the Quandre Holt deal, which to me, this is like a relief. It's not like huge like you think it could be, you know, in the ballpark of uh, five years, 80, 90 plus million dollars. What do we got here? 51.8 divided by three is 17.26. Pretty good money, but seems doable. You sign him, you still have plenty of cap space after that. AJ Cole, Dexter Lawrence, Emmanuel Adkins. That's where it starts to get tricky here. 89 overall guard, 10 million a year, only normal development, going to be regressing soon. Still a really good player. We'll have uh, Nick Gresham, Calvin Ridley, Frank Sermon, obviously, he hasn't done much to earn a new contract with us yet. This doesn't seem like a bad year at all. This feels like a pretty easy cap situation. We're back on track, kind of, with this win over Washington. It did take overtime, but we at least get to three and two. Three scores for Brian Petrovsky, two interceptions. Again, you know, we're not doing a ton on the ground. Like, it's not comparing to last year. Dion Myers has a really big game though, and perhaps he had a walk-off win. I don't know who scored the game-winning touchdown, but that's very good to see. And then Asante Samuel picked up an INT, no sacks for us somehow, and that takes us into a Cowboys matchup. They end up being important. They're four and one, we're three and two. We've got Philly on the horizon, but still a couple games between now and then. And we got a perfect chemistry situation here. Discuss an emerging receiver. Is this going to be Dion Myers after that game? Oh, no, it's Jason Weaver. Okay. Building some chemistry with the deep threat. 
And let's see, he needs 100 here to get to star. Okay, so we talked about Weaver at the very beginning, and now suddenly this is much more manageable, I'd say. And then touchdowns will increase the XP he gets. All right, it's the Jason Weaver game once again. We've already had this come up before. And it didn't work out, but take two against the Dallas Cowboys. Having to replace a couple star offensive players, you'd think Dallas would be primed for a solid step backwards, but it hasn't played out like that. So the new running back is Jaden Gay from Colorado State, fourth year in the league. Not familiar with him, but he's bounced around the league a little bit here. This is his third team. First real starting opportunity. And he is an 82 overall. Nice acceleration at 96. 88 carrying. Decent spin. Can catch the football. Just seems like an all-around running back. And at receiver now, you still got CD and Michael Gallup. But they're replacing Amari Cooper with Manny Cowan. 6'5", 221. Cowan previously played with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So they address these needs in free agency, not in the draft. Not only that, but they also signed Devin White, it looks like, this past season. So Dallas has been busy in free agency. But today, they are going to miss Micah Parsons. That's a huge loss for him to not be out there. But there's still so much to worry about. Kendrick Patterson was drafted a, a while ago here in the series, and he's been he's played really well against us. Never had that elite sack production season, but he's really good. And there's also Quiddy Pay. So it sure looks like Dallas has handled losing some of these stars with relative ease this year. And to make it more difficult, they've also had to figure out. You know, things without Micah Parsons. So, Giants and Cowboys meeting yet again. There was an update that came out this week, not long ago, for Madden 22, and it did address some things in scouting. I think that the, the specialties for your scouts now will mean more. I don't know how much it really changes everything, but here's the prospect spotlight player for this year from that scenario. It's Robert McLeod. He's from Clemson. We have 30% on him right now. And it's given us awareness, injury, and stamina. So we know A awareness is at least valuable, and he's a good athlete. So just based off that, I'm thinking third round as the floor for him. So I think there are going to be some higher scouting percentages for some of these players. But ultimately, it's still the same system and everything, so... I really hope that it's made a lot better in Madden 23. I want to take away the short throw today from Dallas, and I'm actually tempted to try and improve the running game here. It struggled to begin the season, and I want to turn that around with this game right here. So I know it's a Jason Weaver day. We want it to be. I'll make it throw two touchdowns here, but I don't really care about the staff points anymore. Let's just take a look at injuries. We want Jason Weaver to have a nice day, and I want to see Tavares Towns dominate a bit better. So Mabry is hurt. Baldwin, Hearns. We're seeing a lot of the backups here suffer some injuries. Matthew Hearns doesn't play a whole lot, typically. And on offense, we do lose Matthew Riles, who is kind of the sixth lineman. Again, we get to upgrade Dion Myers. Let's go with the uh, route running here. Even if it's deep route running, I mean, that's pretty good. But we'll get short and medium there. It's a solid slot upgrade. Hopefully, we get to see him featured a bit more. Now, Justin Elam, we actually drafted him at a very low overall. But we had so many good trench battle scenarios last year. He was able to go up a ton of points and basically become the new backup tackle. That's why we made that trade we did in the preseason involving Barton. I do have a kicker on the practice squad, by the way, just in case, you know, Tucker finally retires or something. 
Frank Maddox is now developing. And here is Patrick Perkins. Let's go with some of the pass rushing here. Trying to find a way to get him a few snaps, and that's a perfect upgrade. Speed, strength, his top pass rush move. But clearly, he's not getting on the field uh, a lot right now, and that does need to change. We meet Dallas once again after being knocked out of the postseason by them a year ago and having already lost the first meeting this season. This rivalry has been at the forefront of the entire series, and that is not about to change. It is Dallas football to begin the day as they will open at their own 25-yard line. So how does this offense perform now? Missing some of the players who have had big games against us. That's a nice run to start the day. Out to the 41, Jaden Gay gets 16 yards. To the air now for the first time. Prescott underneath, and that's Cowan getting the two new players to the offense involved early. Well, the Vikings are 1-4. Maybe it was a one-year wonder, but they sure made that one-year count. Here's a first down run for Dallas and a late penalty marker. That's holding on the star right tackle, Dion Porter. And this time, Prescott completes the pass. It's a gain of five. So we're trying to take away those shorter throws, force Prescott to hold on to the football a little bit longer and allow that front four to get home. Setting up the screen, and we defend it perfectly because Quandre Holt is out there to make the play. Cowboys just had an awful 13-yard punt, so we have good field position. Trips to the right on first down, and we start with a run, and it's Tavares Towns for only two. So again, Jason Weaver needs 100 yards receiving. He gets bonuses for touchdowns scored, and he's been kind of quiet lately. I was surprised it was his breakout chance. We motion Myers, fake the handoff. There's Myers brought down for a loss. Low snap inside to Towns and despite the great field position, we waste it. Imagine having to take the snap in your own end zone. You got three superstar edge rushers there. Prescott stands at the goal line on second down and completes for a first down. Jaden Gay heavily involved in the offense in the first couple of possessions. Third and six, Dallas. They go with the three receivers set there at the top. Prescott rolling out. He dumps it complete, but they are not getting the first down. Ojulari with good coverage. Giants football, no one's moving the ball well here early on. Petrovsky completes to Rayshon Graham, and that's held to a gain of five. Four on the rush. Petrovsky to Graham again. First down and more. He gets out of bounds near midfield. Now we go play fake. Petrovsky downfield and caught by Rayshon Graham. Where's Jason Weaver through all of this? Dallas is challenging. Just like a simple catch by Graham. Come on now. I mean, it wasn't simple, but it was clearly a catch. Now we run it. Right side, a hole for Towns. First down and more. Breaking tackles down inside the Dallas 15. That's the exciting offense we're always expecting to see. First down, New York. Petrovsky in trouble trying to buy time, and that's incomplete. Graham is bottom of your screen alongside Deion Myers. Third down. We need 11. Petrovsky's got all the time he could ever want. And now he's sacked. What was that? I better not see any open receivers in the end zone. And if Petrovsky, you know, wanted to give Towns a shot, he could have done it. 
right there. Otherwise, you know, coverage in the end zone, pretty good on Myers. I mean, if you can hit the corner here, I don't think that Diggs can get back. Oh, come on. Yeah, he's even still moving forward there. Petrovsky, you blew it. So it's kind of a lackluster start for the offenses, and we saw something similar in the Minnesota game. Now, Dallas takes over, and they just lost a few on third and one, giving the ball back to the Giants. First down, Jawan Johnson. That converts a third and eight. 14 more. So we are on the move again. Third down and inches. We keep it on the ground. First down, Towns inside the 20. Play fake this time. Petrovsky scans. Wants six. And it's intercepted in the end zone. He forced this one. And instead of Jawan Johnson, it's Jamar Johnson with the interception. It's reminding me an awful lot of that Viking episode. Dallas still down 3-0 as they take over. And Prescott will settle underneath, and they get the first down across the 50. Inside, and that's a solid run of 7. Run defense has been pretty inconsistent recently. It's another run right up the middle through this leaky run defense. Prescott heads back to the air. Under heavy pressure gets it away, and it's a first down. Throwing on second down. Prescott connects inside the five. Nice adjustment to that one. Cowboys five yards out from taking the lead. C.D. Lamb and Michael Gallup top of your screen as they keep it on the ground and Quinton makes a good tackle. On second down, they run again and the stop is made. And there is the player we traded for, Ernest Black. Trying to keep Dallas from taking the lead. Here's Prescott on third down. He's going down. And that's Antonio Golson with the sack. Dion Myers, gain of 20. And perhaps we can get something else before halftime. What's the situation here? Obviously tied at three now. And New York has it with 61 seconds to go. I'm still not sure Jason Weaver has a catch. Might want to change that here. Fade away from Petrovsky. Caught by Myers. Out of bounds. Going empty now. Town slot right. Quick pass. On target for Johnson. First down. 30 seconds remaining. Petrovsky gets it away. Wants six this time, and Weaver can't handle it. He had the best chance. That might have hit him in both hands. 25 seconds remaining now. Petrovsky on the outside. Hooks up with Myers, who gets a quick six yards. You're definitely in field goal range here. One timeout left for New York. Petrovsky completes it to Rayshon Graham, and that'll force us to use our last timeout and bring out Tucker. No first half touchdowns. It's 6-3. to three. So why don't we take this into the second half now? Jawan Johnson just had a 22-yard reception. So a first down again. Basically same situation as our uh, end of half, only we have plenty of time now. Petrovsky from the pocket completes the pass and that is Jason Weaver finally we need way more Jason Weaver and that's Graham with the leaping grab it's so much fun watching him get targeted now because he can catch everything anywhere on the field six for 56 
Play fake. Petrovsky away from the pressure. Gets it away, and it's incomplete. Third and six for the Giants. Three tight ends in the game. Petrovsky goes up top. Jump ball. Incomplete for Graham. Diggs with really good coverage. And we still have not seen a touchdown in this game. Justin Tucker, 41. And it's good. Now in that Viking game, we eventually scored like three touchdowns in that third quarter. Not sure that's going to happen today. Nice tackle by Golson. Trying to spread out the defense now on second down. Prescott outside, intercepted! It's Cunningham, and he breaks a tackle. The Giants take over at the 26. How about the rise of Isaiah Cunningham? Does it at all mirror the development we saw of Ray Sean Graham just on the opposite side? Underwhelming to begin. Talking bust territory. In a way, expectations weren't being met. But now, he improved in year two. Year three could be even better. And that's a big time play. We're at the 26 of Dallas now. Here comes Weaver in motion. We've been past heavy, and that's not changing here. Petrovsky floats it. Incomplete. Huge collision at the goal line. And there is an injury here for Dallas. But we go back to the line for second down and six. Second and ten. Why did I say six? Johnson takes off and scores. It's a touchdown at last for the Giants as they increase their lead over Dallas. 15-3. So whose responsibility is it here when you got Jawan Johnson in man coverage? That's not something you want to leave your linebackers in charge of here. Playing inside... And it's a corner route, so good luck with that. And the speed of Johnson, yeah, right. You're not making that up. New York converts the two-point conversion, and we go back to Dallas. Disappointing day on offense. Dak has to make some things happen, and he does complete the pass for a gain of five. They run this one. And Gresham comes down to make the stop to force third and one. Anything can happen here with this D-line. You can't be too confident running the ball at Dexter Lawrence. But they'll try it, and they do have it. First and ten, Dallas. And the fadeaway from Dak is going to be incomplete. Cunningham with good coverage there on Gallup. So I do prefer that we have uh, Asante Samuel on CD there, top of the screen. Second down, down the middle, and behind the defense. Jaden Gay to the 15. Doesn't have that home run speed to take it the distance, but he looks like a really good player. Just a solid, well-rounded player. 66 yards receiving, taking Dallas into the red zone. And now they want him to run again. Gain of five. This is now third and four Dallas. Isolated at the top is C.D. Lamb. Dak firing off the mark for Gallup. He just missed him wide open. Mike McCarthy can't believe it as he sends out Eddie Pinheiro. That might be... Just the final straw for Dallas in this game. It's already, you know, been tough. But to waste that opportunity? Hard to come back. It's an 11-point game now. And Petrovsky hooks up again with Johnson. He's out to midfield. What else is new? So, we can't afford... That classic Brian Petrovsky boneheaded interception. The game is too tight for that. Gotta play a nice clean half of football. Jason Weaver still hasn't seen much thrown his way. Petrovsky will complete again to Jawan Johnson who's having a very big game. 
seven, a buck 29, and a touchdown. Everybody in tight. Off the fake. Petrovsky for Graham, and he's got him. Oh, he didn't make the catch, though. Could not complete the process, apparently. I thought that was good. Towns now bursting through the middle with a solid run to bring up third and four. With all these playmakers spreading out the Dallas defense, nobody over Johnson. Here's Petrovsky, and it's Towns first down inside the 20. Kind of a sloppy play there for Dallas. 4 on the rush. Pass caught. Warren Griffith. Let's check the penalty here. Yep, that's what I saw. Pass interference on the defense. Griffith is now the fullback. And Towns bounces off first contact and is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Dallas trying to force a field goal to make it a 14-point game. Third and goal. Play fake Petrovsky. He's got to make a call here. And he'll go down for the sack. It's Quiddy Pay. Dallas isn't completely done, but they need two touchdowns and haven't scored any yet. We're into the fourth quarter. Prescott underneath, starting with a nine-yard catch and run. Prescott firing outside. Nice grab there by Gallup and tight roping the sideline as he gets nine. They run this one. Big first down. Dallas moving the ball well to start this drive. Exactly what they're looking for. 42 yards away from the end zone and working to his left. There goes Dak tucking and running for a first down. Ball at hour 31, and here comes Gallup in motion. Prescott, he doesn't see the pressure, but still evades it and then goes down because of his own player. That was strange. After the eight-yard loss for Prescott, they set up the screen, and that's a nice tackle by Springs. Third and 15, Dallas. It's four down territory. Receivers will get a clean release at the line. Prescott against the four-man rush. Completes underneath. Nice stop by Quinton. It's fourth down. And basically the game for Dallas. They need this conversion. Lamb and Gallup, bottom of your screen. The ball has to go that way, I would think. Prescott. Now he's working to his right. Throws to the end zone. Touchdown, Cowboys! They're not done yet. What a catch by Thomas. Just throwing it up. And Dallas has made this a game. 6.30 left to go in the ball game. And the New York Giants trying to run clock and hoping for at least a field goal drive to go back up two scores. Fake to Towns. Pass. Caught by Jason Weaver. I think that's only his second reception. Not exactly going to accomplish the goal. He's been lining up across from Diggs the entire game, though, so you can understand why he might be struggling a bit. Slot right is Johnson. Here's second down. And a deep ball. He didn't get all of it. And it's caught anyway. It's Sean Graham. He adjusts to the underthrown football. And he takes it down to the 31. We are well within range now for Justin Tucker with five minutes to play. First and 10. Petrovsky retreating. Sacked outside of field goal range. You can't have that. So now we got to get these yards back. Second and 25. Caught. Graham. Lost the football. And the Cowboys have recovered it. NFC East strikes again. It's always something with this division and these games. 
Dak is in the zone. Every time we're in this situation, by the way, he just hits CD Lamb for 60 yards down the field. I'm waiting for that one now. CD, top of your screen. 349 left to go. Prescott. Oh, what is Gresham doing? Make a play on that. Two for ten. Yeah, he's totally going deep to CD on one of these. Lobbed outside. Broken up. I thought that was a throwaway. I can't believe that was actually like an attempted pass. Like he wanted that to possibly be complete. That looks so weird. Setting up the screen. Nicely done. First down, Jaden Gay down the sideline. He might have 100 receiving at this point. But they just lost Deion Porter at right tackle. And he's a stud, young up-and-coming tackle. Ojolari versus the backup. Go make your money. Pass. Caught inside the 20. Taking off to the 8. Why? Cowboys at the 7, man. Not even using the big play to CD this time. Delayed. Up the middle and we're there. On the carry, it's going to be a few yards for Jaden Gay to set up third and goal. Four down territory. I think Glass could be their target here again. They've gone to him in the short game. They could also try one more run. Third and goal. To the air. Touchdown, Cowboys. They isolate Jabril Peppers. And Dallas, with the extra point, will tie the game. This rivalry, this division, man. This is NFC East football. Two minutes left to go. It's returnable for Deion Myers across the 20 to the 25. We can't turn the football over again. How big was Dallas forcing a field goal down there in the red zone? Now two touchdowns later, we're all tied up. Petrovsky complete to Myers. The rookie has a gain of eight. Petrovsky 347 in the air. A minute 35 left to go. He launches down the sideline. It's Weaver inside the 25. Jason Weaver, thank you. Now let's go win the game. I formation behind Petrovsky as Weaver gets up to 64 receiving. Not much there for Towns as Dallas will burn all their timeouts. Jason Weaver could be the reason we win, but he could also fail to reach that goal. Towns on second down, up the middle. Last time out for Dallas. So here, if they can stop us, they will ensure 35 seconds or so to come back. And Towns gets the first down, takes off toward the end zone, and he's stopped at the two. And that's going to allow us to just play it slow here for... Justin Tucker, or maybe score a touchdown, but we shouldn't. You shouldn't score. Dallas should let you walk in. They're not doing that. You have to run one more snap here. Towns inside, won't get in. Can the greatest kicker of all time handle a kick from less than 20 yards? Timeout. We'll run one more play on offense. Dallas would be wise to let this be a touchdown. Towns walks in for the score. So Dallas is going to have that chance. 29 seconds, no timeouts. What are they going to try as we have taken the lead? Huge stuff from Jason Weaver to make that deep ball catch on Diggs. And now we just have to hold on. Returnable.
clock winding down across the 15 and stop shy of the 20. You got to let that just bounce into the end zone. So their goal is to get out of bounds or have one big play where they can then spike it. Prescott's going to launch this one across the middle and they're going to leave themselves just one play it looks like. Four. Three. Last play for Dallas. Got a score. Dak fires as far as he can. Getting to the end zone. Broken up. It's over. I can't believe he got it there. And Cunningham has sealed it. What a finish. They got one on one at the goal line. A chance to tie it. And they couldn't do it. Well, it wasn't boring. I'll say that much. It was to begin. But what a game. That's a classic fourth quarter right there. Petrovsky, 391. Man. That was fun. Jason Weaver, 64 yards. It's unfortunate now he fails the scenario, even though like he just had one of the biggest plays of the day. I want to go back to this one first. So Dak, he just threw it from the 21 to the goal line. And keep in mind, this is not in a straight line. So I don't know. You have to factor in the horizontal. It's a diagonal throw, obviously. This thing traveled 80 yards in the air, though. 80 yards. That's frightening. But great coverage down the field by Cunningham. That is so big. And here was Jason Weaver. Matched up. Trayvon Diggs, the playmaker. And it's just, you know, a little bit of speed separating here. And a beautiful throw. Only he can get it. If you don't like that, you don't like NFC East football. But I think you had a good time with that ending. And how about this, Jason Weaver? No, we're going to get rid. No, we're rewriting this. I've been putting in the work for these exact moments. And it's just nice to help the team get a win. What an end to the episode. That's, that's how you hope they all end, you know? Go through so many videos here. You just want each one to feel special and have some fun moments. We get that here late today. Giants 4-2. We split with the Cowboys this season. And next time, we'll see if Philadelphia is for real this year. And where the NFC playoff race goes from here. Brian Petrovsky, 12 touchdowns on the season to 6 interceptions. Tavares Towns, 535 yards on the ground. Rayshon Graham leads the team in receiving, but Jawan Johnson's been very good. Jason Weaver and Deion Myers are having their moments. This is still a very potent offense and a team that looks like it can go on yet another run. Thank you for watching today's episode, everybody, and please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the action today. Leave your thoughts down below and there will be more Giants franchise coming your way soon. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you next time.